Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to welcome to Israel. Uh, some of you visited Mobileye yesterday and had a chance to, to drive our uh, test vehicles of uh, autonomous uh, cars. So I, I'd like to say a few words about the challenges uh, that we are that we are focusing on. Normally, when when you hear someone talking about autonomous cars, they focus on the technology. You know, here I have these uh, sensors and the data from these sensors are processed by these miraculous a AI algorithms and I have, you know, cutting edge driving policy, decision making uh, algorithms and here I drive there and here I drive here and so forth. Actually, what will determine success or failure of autonomous driving is not all of that. And this is something that, that we started gradually to understand about a, a year ago when we asked ourselves, what is going to determine whether autonomous driving is going to remain a science experiment? You know, you have hundreds of vehicles doing nice PR and showing uh, you know, how the future could unfold or it will be a real business. And we came to the conclusion that a new discipline needs to, needs to emerge, and this is what I put here in the title, it's some kind of law plus math. And that's called regulatory science. And I'll try to, uh, to convince you what is what what is behind here so it's all about uh, it's all about uh, safety and when we look on safety today there are two types of safety mm -hmm. one is is very you know very well talked about in the automotive industry and also avionics and th that's called functional safety this is how do you how do you make sure that you verify the system integrity against faults could be a bug in software could be a, a failure of, of hardware uh, you create a, a redundancy, secondary channel, fail operationals, all of that to make sure that the integrity of the system is, 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 is maintained. And there are code names for it, ACLB, ACLD, and, and so forth. So, so the automotive industry, th this is kind of the conversation. That's fine. It is, it is needed. But there's another type of uh, safety. It's called this uh, nominal safety, which is completely open. And this is, is, what, is what in the design of the technology what can, how do we design the technology to provide guarantees to society about whether we're going to get involved in an accident, whether we're going to cause an accident? What do exactly do we say to society about accidents? Because you know, we're putting a machine on the road and this machine can kill people. And because the driver, there's no driver, then the technology supplier is responsible. So, so what, what, what do we do here? How do we create a system in which everyone is satisfied uh, with it. Society is satisfied, the technology suppliers are, are, are satisfied, and we do something good. We, we, save, we save lives. So, th so this is what I, I, I want to focus on. And, and you know, uh, Eugene mentioned the different uh, uh, thought experiments people have on nominal safety, which is mileage-driven. If you drive more and more mileage, uh, then probably your maturity of your system is, is increasing, um, measuring disengagement, uh, what is the probability of the safety driver taking control of, of uh, the car? The lower the probability, presumably the, the safer the, the system is, using uh, simulators, uh, trying to mimic the real world with simulators, and then testing over billions of miles, virtual miles, uh, testing your, your, your software, and also scenario-based verification, isolating a number of uh, scenarios and testing those uh, scenarios. So uh, since Eugene talked about this, I, I want to skip the point is that none of these are, are really convincing. It's good to have these, but none of them would provide the guarantees that, uh, that we need. So when we started thinking about this, we said well, when we look at traffic law, everything is clear until we reach this elusive point, uh, which is fluid, changes from culture to, uh, to culture, depends on societal uh, norms, and that's called duty of care. Now, duty of care is not just for automotive. Duty of care is any business that potentially can harm business, can harm people, you have to exercise care. And the interpretation of care is left open. Yeah, all laws are, are open for interpretation, and this, specifically, this specific law is, is, is open for, for, for interpretation. Uh, so if you are involved in an accident, then your interpretation of duty of care is then being analyzed by judge and, and by the jury and whether it forms with societal norms, yes or not. And if it forms with societal norms, then probably you are not at fault. If it does not form with societal norms, then you are at fault. So that we have here a very, very critical element, which is open for interpretation, which could be fine for humans, 
But when we talk about machines that know in advance exactly what they are going to do, we need to, we need to clarify this point. And, and why math is involved? Because clarifying this point does not just involve philosophizing, it involves also significant math. And I'll explain the, the motivation of, of why, we need, uh, why we need math in all, in all of this. So, so the idea is to interpret the, the, the duty of care. And this is a, a, a paper that we uh, wrote a year ago. Uh, it's now in its fourth uh, uh, revision. It's a very technical paper. We have been working with regulatory bodies, with industry uh, uh, players, with our um, car manufacturer uh, partners to start integrating the concept in this paper into, into the design of autonomous cars. And, and everything here is open. So nothing of what I'm going to show promotes technology of any particular actor. The idea is that we want to elevate everyone simultaneously so that we can enable the industry of autonomous driving to, uh, to move uh, forward. So I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words about what are the issues here and say a few words about the, uh, the approach. So we're talking about an interpretation of duty of care. So what, what, what are the challenges? The challenge is that we need to satisfy three, three dimensions, three axes. Two of them are kind of obvious. The third one is, is completely non-obvious. So the first one is soundness. We would like this interpretation to comply with the way humans interpret uh, duty of care. Right? We don't want the machine to have a completely esoteric interpretation of, of what careful uh, means. It has to comply with the way humans uh, understand duty uh, of care. So this is, this is soundness. Usefulness, well, we can create all sorts of interpretations that seems legitimate, they're fine, but they're completely useless. For example, I can adopt an interpretation saying that when I change lane, I should not interfere with the motion of all other agents. So while I'm changing lane, all other road users continue their own speed. This sounds like a very, very careful approach of changing lane. I simply do not interfere with anyone else. The problem is that in many countries, most of the world, this is useless. You'll not be able to change lane at all. Here in Israel, there's no way you'll be able to change lane if you assume that all other road users will com continue their own speed. They need to slow down to allow your room to get in. Right? So you can come up with all sorts of legitimate interpretations that are sound but not useful. Okay, so, so usefulness or agility and being able to allow for agility is also important because if the cars are not agile, then it will remain a science experiment because no city would like these cars that block traffic to start moving in, in, in their city. Right? It, we're building a business, everybody would want these cars to roam their streets. They have to be agile, they have to be useful. So, so those two dimensions are kind of obvious. We need, to, we need to be sound, we need to be useful. The third one, is the non-obvious one. The third one is what we call efficiently verifiable. We need to create an interpretation in which we can prove mathematically that the implementation of that interpretation follows the interpretation. It means it has to form, it has to, it has to follow the inductive uh, uh, principle so that you can verify instantaneously every action that you do whether it follows the interpretation or not. So just, I'll give an example of an interpretation does not, does, that does not follow uh, this rule. For example, let's assume that I'm the front car, and the rule is if the rear car is too close to me, I should accelerate a bit. Sounds reasonable. Somebody's too close behind you, accelerate a bit. That rule, you, you cannot verify it. It will create a chain of events, it will create a butterfly effect that when you do innocent actions now that could create accidents later in the future. So you have your interpretation that from a mathematical point of view, you cannot implement, you cannot then uh, uh, verify. So, so these are the three, these are the three axes that needs to be uh, satisfied uh, uh, simultaneously. And this is what we, we, we set to do. This is just to show that agility is very, very important. So I, I redacted the name of the, of the, uh, of the technology supplier because the point here is not to pick on any particular it's just to say how important it is to be agile. So this is a report, August 28, about one of the most advanced actors in, the, in this field, and that their cars are simply not behaving according to, uh, to how humans expect cars to, to behave. They will stop abruptly, they will not merge into, into traffic when the traffic is, is, is dense. They upset other, other uh, road users. And, and by the way, this particular reporter uh, drove our vehicles and he found out that 
there is something uh, quite novel in the way we, we approach it because it was able to, to do agile uh, driving. So, um, so the, the, the technique, we call it responsibility sensitive safety. Again, so the technique means an interpretation that follows these three axes. It's sound, it's useful, it enables usefulness, it enables agility, and it's efficiently verifiable. Those are the three. Uh, so first of all, it defines what is a dangerous situation. Because unless we formally define dangerous, we cannot be agile because we don't know what is the boundary between non-dangerous and dangerous. If we don't know the boundary between non-dangerous and dangerous, then we become too conservative. We do not take risks because we don't know, are we going to now cause an accident, yes or not? So one of the first elements in this definition is to define what constitutes dangerous. Second one is what constitutes proper response. Let's assume that you are in a dangerous situation. What are the responses that you must do in order to get out of, those, get out of the dangerous situation without causing another, another accident? That also needs to be defined. And then, what, what does it mean to be reasonably cautious? Because in order to be cautious, you need to take worst case judgments, but worst case judgments under reasonable assumptions. Because if you take the worst case assumption, absolutely, like the example that I gave in changing the lane and all the other road users will not change their speed, you could come up with a, an interpretation that is not useful. So what humans do, they make assumptions about what other road users would do, and, and those assumptions, they conform to societal norms. You don't make crazy assumptions. You make assumptions that, uh, that apply, to comply with the, with the common sense. And, and here, one, one needs to go and define these assumptions in a formal way. Formal way me meaning that there are parameters, and those parameters can be set based on the culture of driving, based on, on, on the territory, based on the societal norms of, of the particular uh, area that, we, that we'll be driving with. Okay, so what, what are the assumptions are, are really uh, important. So this is, this is what we set to, to do. And, and what we came out was it's kind of an Occam's razor type of uh, uh, model. It's based on the entire, the entire driving experience with all the complexity of driving experience. We found out that can be reduced to five uh, principles, to five, to five rules and everything emerges for these five. All the complications of priority, of, of uh, junctions and mergers, um, city traffic, uh, carefulness, all, all, can, all can fall into these uh, five rules. Um, I'll not go over them. Again, the point here is, is um, to kind of motivate you to look into that paper and start a, 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 uh, a conversation. So I'll, I'll skip the technical uh, parts, okay? Again, it is just to say, okay, that uh, uh, this exists. The model covers all possible, uh, all, all possible uh, uh, situations. And uh, let me show you an, uh, an example. So the people that were at Mobili yesterday have seen it, but uh, let me show you. So th this is a car which has 12 cameras around it. It's only cameras, later we'll add radars and ladders. We're building separate subsystems. So these are the 12, these are the fields of view of, of uh, the cameras, the front facing, three different fields of view. And then there are uh, side, uh, there are eight cameras providing long range, another four cameras providing uh, a short range. So these are the corner cameras, and there are rear corner cameras, and the, and the rear camera, and then parking cameras to provide a full 360 uh, degree. So now, when we look at driving, and, and we're using Jerusalem for, for, for testbed because the, the, the driving culture here is, is, is assertive. It's similar to France, to Italy. It, uh, it opens up a very, very big market if you know how to drive safely and with agility in, in, in Israel, in, in Jerusalem in particular. Jerusalem is like San Francisco, it has hills, so it's also the terrain is, is interesting. So our, I'll run this clip. Our car is the blue car, okay? Now, it, uh, it, the color codes are white means that this car does not affect our control. Red is a car that the system decides to give way. Green is the system decided to take way. So when you want to change lane, you try to find a gap between a red and a green. And this decision is, is being done every, every fraction of a second because you may decide you want to take way from this vehicle, but then this vehicle doesn't allow you to. It, 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 you know, it 
shortens, it, it completes the gap or accelerates in, in order not to allow it to. So you don't want to be reckless and force yourself in. You have to gradually signal that, that you want to change lane. So uh, let, let's look at, at the changing lane. Again, the blue car is going to change lane to, to the left. And notice the color codes, the green and the red, they may change. So now it wants to change lane, but now the, the green changed to, uh, to red because that car did not allow our AV car to change lane. And then it succeeded. Notice the, 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 the complexity, the, the, congestion, the congestion of, of, this, uh, of this traffic. Uh, let me show you another example where the very uh, human behavior, now the blue car wants to change to the right and it will find a gap between this red and the green. And then at some point it will start accelerating. It accelerates and then it will, uh, then it will change lane. Again, that's, it's very congested the traffic. You need to flow with the traffic. You need to, on one hand to be safe on the other hand, to be, to be agile. Let me, let me show you the last one. There is a motorcycle on the right. The blue vehicle wants to take away from the motorcycle, but the motorcyclist does not allow it to. It accelerates, so now it changed to red. It gave way to the motorcyclist, and then it goes, and then it goes back. So all those, the decision-making and the RSS model, the way we interpret the, the, the duty of care are integrated together, such that the car <laughs> can never make a decision that will cause an accident according to this uh, duty of care. Okay? So just to, to summarize the kind of the, the, the tree of, uh, of considerations, we have the law, then we have the interpretation of the law, and with the duty of care, this is a big, a big iceberg. What, what is duty of care? How do you interpret it? And then I said there are three axes that you need to, that you need to uh, optimize here. One is soundness, it has to comply with human judgment of how humans view duty of care. Usefulness, it has to be agile because otherwise it will block uh, traffic. And third, this is where mathematics come in, it has to be efficiently uh, verifiable. It has to allow for the inductive uh, principle uh, to, uh, to form and there could be many interpretations that do not satisfy this uh, uh, third axis. So you need to satisfy all three in order to create, uh, in order to create a model. Thank you. Thank you.